joined back here on the anchor desk by Nick Tate, the deputy Newsmax health editor. Uh, Nick is also the author of the book, The Obamacare Survival Guide. And uh, as you might expect, a lot of people have interest in that. Also Skyping in for us from Washington, D.C., board certified physician, Dr. Sanjay Jain. Uh, Dr. Jain, we really appreciate your time again. And let's talk some about the travelers from West African countries facing Ebola outbreaks. Uh, what, what they're going to have to face in terms of stronger screenings at American airports. Uh, we touched on it first hour, but it's worth revisiting. Are you well, confident these, these screenings will be effective? I think the additional screenings are going to be effective to a, a certain extent. Now, the problem is that there might be people who are on the fringe of fever, people who don't have high fevers, maybe very low-grade fever, and you know, popping a few Tylenols can actually lower it below the point where they can't really detect it as they go through the screening. So that could be one problem. So there's another issue where they're actually on a plane, if they get more symptomatic, who's monitoring that? So probably maybe consider a third layer in which they actually train the airline personnel to monitor people on passenger airplanes and see if there's anybody who's unusually sick to kind of red flag those people. Wow, it sounds like a lot of work for a lot of people who may not be trained uh, in the medical arts, so to speak, doctor. And it, it raises another specter in terms of public policy that I want to address with Nick. Nick, you wrote the uh, Obamacare Survival Guide. One of the changes we're seeing in healthcare is really the rise of physician assistants and nurse practitioners in the healthcare of the future. With so many of these people who will be called on to check folks coming into emergency rooms, what does this portend with? the public health threat that Ebola presents? Well, with the Affordable Care Act, we're getting about 30 million additional people who are going to be getting insurance and seeking care, many of them at ERs, at the same time that we're already seeing doctor shortages in many areas of the country. And what that means is that those shortages are going to likely increase in the years ahead, and that when you go to the ER, when someone comes into an ER, the greater likelihood they'll be treated by a physician's assistant or a nurse who has less training. So the concern is, adding Ebola to the typical cold and flu season, we're going to see a large number of people likely showing up in ERs, and it will be the individuals who may be less trained, have less experience, to make the determination of whether this is a person who should be referred for Ebola testing or whether it's a person who should be isolated. And It's a concern that's already happening in the healthcare system, and I think that the Ebola situation may make it worse. Well, as we just take a look at what is happening in terms of health care and public policy, Dr. Jane, let me ask you a question. Uh, mm -hmm. With Ebola in the immediate future, should certain hospitals within the United States be designated as, for lack of a better term, Ebola centers, Ebola treatment centers to deal with these patients? No, I think that's a great idea because, you know, there is a discrepancy from these large tertiary academic hospitals to the community hospitals. So the equipment, the type of personnel, the training is going to be far more different and probably more advanced than these smaller community hospitals. So just like they have in trauma, they have trauma level one centers to uh, satisfy those people who have bad trauma, they go to these centers. So having these super centers would be a great idea. Well, uh, there's another question I have for you, Dr. Jane. It's something we talked about with Nick yesterday uh, as the reports were emerging. A nurse in Spain who became infected with the virus uh, told investigators she may have touched her face even with a glove on uh, and that's it's believed that's how she got the disease. So here's a nurse, a medical professional. Are a lot of these folks caught flat-footed when it comes to treating a serious epidemic like Ebola? You know, the training has just started to roll out and unfortunately for this nurse in Spain, she contracted it, presumably from touching the glove. So that's a concern because no matter how many steps, there's so many intricate steps in this whole process. One little misstep can really be an issue. And this is exactly what happened. He took all the precautions and one little touch actually, unfortunately, uh, affected her. And uh, Nick, we talked about it before. It really echoes back to what, what you were saying about, about the situation involving um, just the way that the staff distribution of work comes down to it now, uh, there's a human equation of just what, seeing people and fatigue? Sure, well, and, you know, 
A, a hospital ER is a very chaotic place, typically, even when there isn't a situation like these additional alerts on Ebola. And there was a survey that came out this week that showed that, in fact, nurses, 60% of nurses in a recent poll said that they don't believe that their facilities are really prepared to handle large influx of Ebola cases. And as we've discussed, I think we are seeing cases that are uh, happening and being diagnosed outside of West Africa, and I fear there are going to be more cases. And anything that can be done to make sure that those individuals are funneled to facilities like those in, in em at Emory in Atlanta, Omaha, Nebraska, that are really prepared to handle Ebola, I think makes sense. As we just sit here and take a look at this, Dr. Jane, let, let me return to you. Um, science, I know you're a man of science, and we hate to get involved in speculation. But on a personal and professional level, rate, you know, we go rate the, your level of pain when you're in the hospital, rate your concern, one to 10, one being somewhat, 10 being intense. Where are you on the concern scale with Ebola? You know, it's funny you ask that. My, my level of concern is like the stock market, it goes up and down. I hear stories that things are really looking good. We have the ZMAP treatment and all of a sudden, uh, things are not looking so good. So right now I'm sort of in the middle. I'm at, I would say at a six right now. I, I'm very confident here in this country, but I'm not on the front lines. And being in West Africa, I would probably be a, lo a lot more concerned. Well, let's let's talk about something else that quite often is just thought of as seasonal, and that is influenza, the flu. Uh, from from a standpoint of the likelihood of flu as opposed to Ebola, what should uh, what should we all be keeping in mind? Well, the flu is just as bad in terms of how much it can affect, especially in our country. So getting flu shots early is very important. The problem is that now that this Ebola crisis come out, people with the fever and as they've traveled, they're gonna be concerned. Well, do I have the flu or do I have Ebola? So there's gonna be a lot of false diagnosis, a lot of uh, extra uh, diagnostic measurements being taken at these ERs, and it's gonna raise our healthcare costs. Uh, 20 seconds to you, Nick Tate, your take on this final word. Well, I think that the, we need to keep in mind that the flu is not something to be taken for granted. 30,000 people a year die from flu. Ebola is, needs to be controlled. We need to be concerned about it. But flu is not something to be underestimated either. Get that flu shot. Do what you can to protect yourself. That's the wisest thing you can do right now. Fair enough. And we should point out for the Obamacare Survival Guide, you can go to healthradarnow.com, get a special offer on the Nick Tate authored Obamacare Survival Guide. We're going to step aside, but we will return right now. A Newsmax Now update.